I was glad when they said, let us go in to the house of the Lord. But I've got a good experience and I know my heart is clean. I've give up all to Jesus and my soul is all a flame. I'm a walking with my Savior and the Holy Ghost abide. And some way or other the Lord will provide. It was Lot and his old uncle whom one day he had to part. When Abraham did leave him, it almost broke his heart. You take the plain well watered, just give me the old hillside. And some way or other the Lord will provide. When friends persecute you and Satan don't want you to go, down to the old church meet where the saints will shout. And so, just put your trust in Jesus and He will turn the tide. And some way or other the Lord will provide. Well, good morning. We're here at the old abandoned church again. As an old man preacher. Huh? Hello? My wife's trying to tell me something. Got me off off track. Now where was I? Oh yeah, we're at the old abandoned church. The old abandoned preacher and his wife. I had preaching just about from the old abandoned Bible, the old King Jesus Bible, the old abandoned message that man uh, must repent and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. Amen. Amen. Well, put your prayer request on here. Uh, I said that the last time we were here and we had quite a few prayer requests, uh, but uh, I have to read them after we close out. I can't see them from this distance. Uh, but uh, And Facebook blanked them all off. I know we had quite a few, and uh, when I got home and went to check them, to uh, see the comments and prayer requests, I only had like uh, six or seven, and I never could find them. They, they wanked them off. We, we fight not against flesh and blood, but against prince of power, principalities and powers of the air, rulers of darkness, and high places. I might. Devil don't like it, but God blesses it. God's blessing is far, far beyond Satan's curses. Amen. Trying to do a work for Jesus. Amen. We could be sitting in a lot of assemblies enjoying the good music and listen to a fine message. Uh, but here we can preach the Word of God. And uh, in the last two or so months, we've got to preach to over 3,000 people from this pulpit right here. And by the time uh, our broadcast goes off on Sunday, we have. Uh, Anywhere from 50 to 75 people that are not in church, many not uh, their fault, but many are just out of church, and uh, they wouldn't be in church. They wouldn't have any kind of church service as such unless they found something like this. And I believe that's why God impresses me to do such. Thank you for being with us today. My voice is bad. Judy's a lot better. <clears throat> and uh, the, the antibiotics that they gave her keep her sick. Thank God she'll be done with that Tuesday. Is that right? Wednesday. And uh, she wanted to quit taking them, but I encourage her to keep on taking them to get that get a complete job done with those things. They make her so sick, but thank God she's able to be with us today. Remember the, the uh, pastors, the people today, put your prayer request on here, and we can find it after a while. Uh, we'll so be a, making it a matter of prayer. Do remember the pastors under great loads today trying to lead the people of God.
trying to feed the sheep, fight off the wolves, reach the lost, touch the heathen, preach the gospel. Amen. Uh, many, many jobs are involved in preaching to a congregation of people this morning for a pastor. And thank God for good pastors. Brother Jim McClure will be out there with my pastor this morning. Brother Jerry Bradley at that new charity Baptist church on Brockdale Road out there on what they call Brockdale Mountain. Where it got to use them there. It's raining real hard. I mean really hard and water's up in the road in places. You remember pray they usually several lost people that come to meet them there. And uh, God we pray. God, we know God deals with men. We pray God just to help them men today to reach these lost people. Thank you for coming. Pray for us now. We're not trying to keep anybody out of the church. We've been accused of such. But we're trying to get people right with God to get them in church. To get them where the Word of God is preached. Where they've got a man of God, called of God, sin of God, and accepted of God, preach the Word of God, in the power of God, to the people of God, and to the folks without God. That's the way it works. And we're trying to do our part to get folks and say, say in this country, in this day and hour, I talked to a young man just the other day, lives up above Knoxville, and uh, he said, Tim, there's just not a church up here in the community around where I live. And he said, I went to quite a few. There's not one up here that uses the old King James Bible. And he said, I just can't take that other stuff. And I said, rightly so. Rightly so. Amen to that. Amen. Uh, it's just amazing as America has turned its back on God, not completely, and maybe not even as a majority. But there is a great minority and sad to say, a lot of it is in the church world. They left the old paths. Wherein was the good way that God commanded us to search out, search, look out, watch for the old paths. Wherein is the good way, he said, and walk therein. Walk has to do with your life. Live therein. I'm not talking about each step you take. No. It's a walk of life. The old timers would say, that I'm afraid this generation has got so technical and so book smart that they forgot some simple terms to explain daily living. But God said, walk therein. Stay with God. Stay with the book. Stay with the leadership of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Stay with the songs God blesses. The Holy Ghost is in it. Amen. The Holy Ghost is in it. It probably won't affect your feet. It may not affect your hands. But it'll stir your soul if you're saved. If you're saved, it'll stir your soul. If the Holy Ghost honors the song. It'll stir your soul. And if you're lost, It'll condemn you, call you, come to God through Christ and be saved. Amen? Amen. I still believe that. I know that. It's not just something I thought up, it's something I've experienced, and the Word of God backs it up. God bless the men today that are preaching the Word of God. God, deal with our nation. Filled with sinners, lost and undone. My, my, we need Jesus. We need revival. You can't revive something that's dead, no. And for these lost folks, they don't need revival. They need a resurrection. They need to be brought from the dead. Whether religious or not, they need to be born again. Born from above. Born of God. Made new. You're saved. You know what I'm talking about. And of course, if you're just a religious person, you're offended and you have no idea of what I'm saying. My, my. We won't look today as God has led us into the Bible, into 2 Timothy. 
chapter 3. God has brought these verses to heart. I've been preaching a lot on John 3, 16, and I'm nowhere near finished. I think I've preached twice or three times here. From John 3, 16, and I've not scratched the surface, and neither has anyone else. For that is the Gospel. And that is the message of the Bible. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever would believe in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. The greatest, the greatest being that man knows anything about, God, greatest gift the world has ever received, God's Son. The greatest act of kindness, of mercy, of love is God so loved the world that He gave. gave the greatest gift that the planet could ever receive. Gave His only begotten Son who gave the greatest gift of His own life, shed His own blood to the greatest congregation, and that is to all humanity, that whosoever no exceptions, no nationalities, no kinds, no colors, no families, no positions as far as on the street or in prison. Thank you for praying for us as it comes to mind. We went to prison with Brother David Elk there Thursday night. Lord willing, we'll be going back this Wednesday night with Brother Larry Seals. They took my old time out there. I gave them my place because my health had been failing and couldn't make it. And uh, they have took it and together we're trying to carry on now for nearly 40 years, twice a month, of going to that prison. Thank you that went with us. We had 48 men. The numbers was a little off as far as numbers go uh, because the yard was open. And they got to be on the outside and at the ball field. And I don't blame them one bit for being out in the open air. They're locked in dormitories about 22 hours a day. And uh, it was either go into the gym, be locked in again, or be outside. And as an old country boy, I tell you, I, I like being outside. And uh, seeing the sky, feeling the breeze, uh, having a Cool mountain breeze blowing your cheek. Hey man, hey man, I like it. But thank you for going praying. We had a good meeting. Brother F brought a good message uh, that uh, no doubt helped those men. And uh, you be praying about this week, whether or not we'll be able to go. And mostly that God will uh, be there and push back the evil, drive back the devils, deal in the hearts of those men to come out. We use the chapel now. As a, we use the gym rather as a chapel <coughs> because the little chapel only holds, it only allows 50 men to be in there. And uh, been having uh, 60, 70, 75 men come out, and uh, that makes it a little big using a gym. Uh, I, but it's better to be packed in a little room. But uh, you pray for us this week. God lead, direct, intervene, answer mama's prayers and bring that boy out to the gym for chapel. Answer daddy's prayers and bring his darling son out to the place to hear the word of God. And you pray to God. Hear that little girl, that little boy's prayer that they pray each night. God, save my daddy. God, find my daddy. God. Be with my daddy. Amen. And God will. And God does. That's why He has men like us to go to those such places as prisons and jails. It's because it's an answer to prayer of people praying for their sons and daughters to hear the Word of God. Amen. And come to God and be saved. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Well, let's read the light is bad. I've got the shutters open, but the light is not good for me, so you bear with me as I try to read this. If I miss a word, please forgive me. But you pray for us that God would help us here 
to his glory. Father, in Jesus' name, we seek your face. Not feeling well in body, uh, but feeling fine in spirit. We praise your name for salvation. Thank you for the gift of your son. Thank you for the plan of salvation. Thank you for caring. Thank you for providing. Thank you for intervening. Thank you for directing. Thank you for calling. Thank you for allowing. Thank you for strength, for courage, for boldness. Thank you for intersection of devils and pushing them back so we can have freedom in America to preach the word of God and live for Jesus. Thank you, Father. Touch those that are sick this morning, them hurting, them battling in spirit and in body. Touch our children as they're in the house of God with the songs and uh, give the man of God a message in the power of God to help our children, to help this country know God and live for Jesus. We pray you would help us to say what needs to be said here today to your glory, to your praise, and for the salvation of some lost soul. Oh, our heart's desire, our prayer is for a sinner to be awakened today to the danger that they're in, that the nearness to hell, where they are, oh, that they turn to God in Jesus' name and be saved this morning. Uh, before it's too late, here on the highways, at the house of God, wherever they are. Some may be waking up out in the woods from the night of drinking and doping. Some may be waking up on a boat down to the river, down somewhere on the lake, after a night of drunkenness and dope and evil. And there they are this morning. And you've answered mama's prayers. You've heard daddy's prayers again. And you've caused them to run across broadcasts like this. I pray the Holy Ghost would push back the evil, shine the light of the glorious gospel into the darkness where they dwell. Draw all men to come to God in Jesus' name before it's eternally and everlastingly too late to your glory and your praise in one day as we look upon the trophies of God's grace. I will know how great, how marvelous how wondrous, how amazing our God's grace was that men such as I, uh, such as we are saved, in Jesus' name we pray, to your glory we ask, in Jesus' blessed, wonderful, glorious, marvelous name, we ask these favors, lead us, guide us, direct us, push back the devil that hinder us this morning, as in every house of God, push back the evil that would hinder the worship, Push back the wickedness that would disrupt the meetings. Push back the devil, call back the evil that would get the pastor's mind off of the message that would distract the people from hearing. Oh my, that would try to intervene. I was sinners uh, that are listening about being saved. Help us, Lord. Help us, God. Help us, we pray. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. Well, praise God. Amen. Bless his name. I put a little post on the uh, Facebook this week I found. See, Mike always running across something good. And of course, we always run across something evil. But there's some good things. And I run across that post as many of you have seen and commented on about no prayer, you know, no power, but no prayer, K-N-O-W, has to do with knowledge, no prayer, no power, K-N-O-W, no, you know, prayer means no power, but knowing prayer means you can know power. P O W E R. Hey man, I was accused one time. Uh, somebody said I preached at a place and a fella told me, said, they said you prayed too long, Tim. You prayed too long. I said, I wish I were guilty of that. I wish I was guilty of that charge. I wish I could stand before God one day knowing. I pray too much. No one will. No one has. Nobody's going to either. 
Ah, but what a good accusation from church folks complaining that a man prays too much. Prays too long. My, my. Is not the house of God, as Jesus said, to be called a house of prayer? But about everything else that goes on, uh, but prayer or token prayers. God help us, we are in the last days. And I want to read to you what the Bible says about the last days. There's no doubt about it. Here in 2022, America, America is on the brink of destruction. Judy, we went to the grocery store yesterday. I've been hearing about food shortages around the country for months. I heard, and Brother Roloff used to predict, though he'd say, I'm not a prophet, nor the son of a prophet, but he, he would say, I'm going to tell you, America is going to end up on starvation before Jesus comes. And I took that with a grain of salt. Who could believe that in America uh, that you could go hungry? And I know there's people are. There's children hungry this morning because dad's a drunkard. There's children that are hungry this morning because mom is a harlot. They're on drugs and dope and they depend on the government to keep them uh, in food and money and they blow it, they waste it, they abuse it, and they use it for their own selfish desires. And many a child is hungry today, uh, not because there's not food in the grocery store, uh, but because the mom and dad have forsook them. They may still live with them, but they have forsook them. Sin has blinded their minds. They've been overcome of evil, and they don't see the need for their children to be fed, to be clothed, to be taken care of, and to raised. They're raised depending on neighbors and whatever they can steal and scratch out of the community. It's so sad, all this supposed welfare, and I'm all for helping people that need help, but all this welfare to people that are able, to people that are healthy, to people that are just living on drugs and dope, uh, I'm definitely against it, and it has not helped the children. It has made the situation, I believe, much worse. That one was free. God bless you. But Judy went to the, we went to the grocery store yesterday, a large chain drug store, uh, drug store, grocery store, and uh, she couldn't find any taters. And she asked the boy working there, and she asked him where the taters were. And he said, ma'am, we don't have any taters. We've not had any taters for several days now. In America, one of the most plentiful crops in America, and yet they don't have any? My, that is a terrible, terrible prediction, evidence of a prediction when you don't have taters. My goodness, my soul, but... And I've heard in many cities that they have a shortage of groceries, that grocery shelves are thin and some are bare uh, for lack of basics like taters, milk, and bread. America, I read years ago how America, as far as the nation, had three days supply of food in the warehouses. That's how close we could be to going hungry. My, my. But we are in the last days. The Sodomites have taken over. I, I read Romans chapter 1 the other day in my Bible reading on the air. And uh, that has been the most viewed Bible reading time I've had since I started Bible reading, which is over a year ago. Just reading the Bible and talking a little bit. Uh, had over 1,100 viewers. Normally it's about 200 to 300 in a week. This would have went over 1,100 uh, reading about the situation of today in Romans chapter 1. It shows you that a lot of America and a lot of the world that we're dealing with America have been given up by God. They chose 
They have made their decision for idols. They worship the flesh. And they fulfill their own ungodly desires. And God has given them over to vile affections. And we live in a nation now uh, that a large percentage of the people, sad to say, are given up by God. That's why they can attend church. A man can uh, read from a book and call it a Bible. Uh, they can dance and sing songs that they call Christian but are ungodly. A glorifying of God. Uh, and they can be content. They can have a homosexual speaker. They can have a sodomite or a teacher, a preacher, a song leader. And they are satisfied and content. As one man told me just this week, his, his denomination, his particular church is about to split because half of the people are in favor of sodomy. And half the people want to put out a bylaw, make a, I don't know what they actually call it, uh, but decry speak up against sodomy and sodomites in the assembling of what's supposed to be God's people. And half the congregation, he said, it's going to split the church uh, because half the people are in favor of it. Friend, you better wake up and realize we are in the last days. Let me read you some scriptures here. 2 Timothy chapter 3 God says this, no, K-N-O-W, has to do with your mind knowing. God wants you to know. Satan don't want you to know. That's why they rewrote the Bible. Satan don't want you to know what God said. When Satan came to Eve in the Garden of Eden, Eden he perverted the Word of God. He perverted he altered what God had said. He changed what God had said and He add, added to what God had said and He left out part of what God said. You read it in the book of Genesis. You read what God told Adam and then you read what Satan told Eve. And we know what got us in trouble. Eve, Eve believed that satanic Bible conference that they had where they altered, where they changed, where they left part of the Word of God out and made it to suit themselves. And the world now has been in trouble ever since. God put them out. The God of love put them out. The God of grace put them out. The God of mercy put them out. The God, the God that so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, but He put Adam and Eve out, out of the garden. Now, they rebelled. They refused to keep His Word. He said the woman was not in the transgression. Oh, it was Adam. God deals with the man, the head of the house, the way God made it. And He dealt with Adam and said He was not in the transgression, but Adam, Adam partook of it with her to suit Himself to go with her, to be with her, and God put them out. Not to destroy them, not to damn them to hell. No, no, not that He hated them. No, but they had to be dealt with that they might learn to obey God. Amen, amen. And here, God wants you to know. God wants us to know. That's why we still have the old King James Bible. God still wants folks to know. Men don't like it. Men alter it. Men think they fix it. They change it. They leave parts and pieces and bits out of it to suit their denomination, to suit, suit their personal beliefs, uh, uh, to satisfy their own carnal mind. Oh my, to die lost, get religious, to die, to live a religious life, get die lost and undone uh, because they take away from the very Word of God. But God says here, this know that in the last days, perilous times shall come. Notice three things. One is, God wants you to know. Number two is, 
This is the last day. There's no doubt about that. These are the last days. No doubt. It could not, it could not go on much longer as it is. Oh no, God has got a plan. Jesus is coming. The people of God are going to be taken out. Why? Because this world wants the devil. This world wants it wicked. This world wants it vile. This world wants it vulgar. This world wants it satanic. And one day, God will take the church, not a church, the church, the people of God, out and let the devil have this world up for seven years. Oh, what hell it's going to be on earth. Hell without God. Hell without hope. Hell on earth without Jesus. Pure old hell. My, my, because God is going to remove His blessings and the Bible says the earth will rock and reel uh, like a drunk man. Uh, uh, the water's going to turn to blood. Uh, there'll be a creature turned loose from the pit commanded to torment men day and night. And men will flee to the mountains uh, and hide themselves uh, and seek death and will not be able to die. Thank God I ain't going to be here in them days. Amen. But these are the last things. Three things God wants you to know. Amen. That is, He wants you to know. And that it is the last days and perilous times. Number three, perilous times. Very, I looked that word up. I knew it wasn't good. And I looked it up in the dictionary uh, just to see what perilous meant. And by Webster's Dictionary, it means very dangerous. Very dangerous. Very, very, very dangerous. Uh, we live in a day uh, where people go into homes and kill people uh, for a few dollars. Uh, the big cities have turned into a concrete jungle. I forget how many people were killed just last weekend in Philadelphia and in Chicago. Dozens of people are shot every weekend. Uh, over 2,000 have done, died this year in Chicago from gunshot wounds, uh, robbing and killing, oh, and stealing, wicked and vile, raping and incest, abounding. It's promoted, it's encouraged, it's allowed, even by our government and law officials. Uh, Oh, this is the last days. Uh, we better pray that Jesus comes soon. Uh, even so, come Lord Jesus, uh, uh, because this thing is bad and going to get worse. God said, God said wicked men wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But God wants you to know these are the last days. He wants you to know the last days are perilous days. And then he says in verse 2 of 2 Timothy chapter 3, For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Here's the reason that it's perilous times. Men shall be lovers of their own selves, not of their wives, not of their children, not lovers of their mothers and their fathers for I've seen it so many times. Oh, in the last few years, people take mom, their mom and dad to a nursing home and install them in a nursing home and leave and never come back. Their heart is for sin. Their heart is for money. Their heart is for pleasures. They live and exist to have fun and enjoy life. And mom and dad is nothing but a problem and a hindrance. Oh, men shall be lovers for men shall be lovers of their own self, not of their country, not of the future for their children. No, no, not for decency, not for honor, not for respect. No, no, they love them own selves. Uh, covetous, the Bible says, uh, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. Let me say this to parents that are listening. You better teach your children to mind you, to obey you. People will say, 
I just love little Susie and little Johnny too much to whip them. No, you don't love them enough. They're going to be a part of this crowd right here because they're disobedient to parents shows they're on the wrong side of the law of God. The, uh, the first commandment was promised is children, obey your mother and father in the Lord. But this is right. This is the first commandment we promise that your days may be long upon the earth. Hey, Mom, you better let God work in your heart. You better put this worldly philosophy aside that it's all about talk and explaining. It's never about corporal punishment. It's never about being corrected intentionally. Hey, man, there's a generation gap. When my mom crossed that generation gap I, with love and leather, I thought it was awful cruel. I, I was on the hurting side. I thought that it would be that she was whipping, but I didn't understand as a child how it hurt her heart to have to hurt my hide. But you know, as I grew older and we had children, and I sat with my mom in her latter years, five years in the nursing home, I began to understand. Hallelujah, my mama loved me enough to say no. My mama loved me enough to whip me from time to time. My mama loved me enough to stop me. My mama loved me enough to correct me. My mama loved me enough to intervene in my life in situations. My mama loved me enough to learn me better, to show me better. Amen. My mama loved me enough to teach me to live by her law till I got out on my own with my own law. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Disobedient to parents is part of this ungodly last days lost world without natural affections. Truth breakers, false accusers, incontent, fierce, despisers of those that are good. Boy, is that not the day we live in? You can't listen to the news. Uh, you can't see a national broadcast. You can hardly listen to a politician uh, that don't despise Christianity. Uh, you can't hardly, uh, I don't know if Hollywood makes a movie. I don't see many of them or any of them anymore. All the new stuff is so perverted and so ugly and so damning and so hellish and so evil. My, my, my. Uh, but what I do see in commercials, uh, what I do see, uh, they hate God. They mock the Bible. They criticize the Christian. They pick out, they pick out, they pick out a bad example. They pick out some hypocrite. They pick out some phony and some fake. And they hold them up to represent all of us. Uh, my, why? Because they hate Christianity. They despise, the Bible says in the last days, they despise those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure, more than lovers of God. Now, I'll tell you, I'll show you. How do you know that's the last days? Lovers of pleasure, more than lovers of God. Well, you have, you have a ball game on New Year's, on New Year's Day. I forget what they call it, Super Bowl or something like that. And, uh, hey, you know what? Uh, most folks will lay out of church to stay home and watch the ball game. They're lovers of pleasure. They're on their own side of this issue. Oh, my God, help us. This is the last days. I know of one church, of course, it's really out of business now. They've changed the name. It was a hundred-year-old maybe 150 year old organization group of people no doubt they started out in a building just like this in their community and they have finally killed it and shut it down but I remember years ago when it was still called a church and still had pretty much a Bible preaching and still pretty much had some Christians, real Christians in it. I knew them. 
I knew it. Uh, but uh, one Sunday on New Year's Day, they to keep people at church, they come up with this decision, this conclusion. They put up a big screen and they show the New Year's Day ball game to keep people from staying at home, getting them in the building where they could take up an offering, no doubt. But to satisfy their religious ideas and to honor God and show their respect to God and their love for God, they had prayer at halftime. Can you believe that? They had prayer at halftime to show how much they loved God and how they were so dedicated, consecrated, separated, and satisfied with God. They had a little prayer at halftime and went back to the ball game. Is this the last days? Oh, yes. Oh, yes, my friend. This is the last days. And hallelujah. Glory to God and amen. That simply means Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. Hallelujah. Jesus is coming soon. And oh, uh, brother, uh, I'm trying to think his name, but Leopard and Eva, his wife, would say, Jesus is coming soon. Coming night or noon, many will be their doom. Trumpets will sound. All the dead in Christ shall rise, rise to meet him in the skies. Going where no one ever dies, trumpets will sound. I've said all this. I'm wore out, hot, and a sweating. Hallelujah. Amen. Feel like an old time preacher here this morning. No doubt many of them preached in this sopping wet here in this pulpit. No doubt sweat drops have wet these boards, wet these pulpits, wet these tears of regret and tears of repentance and tears of joy. And no doubt have wet this altar. It's not unusual in this building. Oh, it's not unusual here at this place, for it was built around such things. Oh, and I'm glad to be one of the old Hacking, hollering, Bible believing, hallelujah, praise God. Preachers, amen. I'm going to tell you we're in the last days. That simply means Jesus is coming. Are you ready, friend? Are you ready? Are you ready? The whole world's running by. Interstate 40 is about, I guess, 200 yards. Just right there. If you weren't for the trees, you'd see the cars. In the wintertime, you can see this old building clear. The world is rushing by on the road to hell. The majority, no doubt. No doubt the overwhelming majority is unsaved on the road to hell. Everything is more important than God. This is foolishness in this day and time to, to go to church where they actually believe the Bible and they actually holler a little bit and they actually get excited about being saved, being born again. They actually are happy to be a Christian, to be saved by the grace of God, washed in the blood of Jesus, birthed into the family of God, complete, amen, in Jesus Christ, amen, hallelujah, glory to God. But they see no needed that. These houses that are filled today, there's buildings that are <coughs> <coughs> there are buildings that are full of people that wouldn't sit five minutes through through this preaching this morning. They wouldn't even think about stopping at such a place as this old church building. And if I could get in or any other preacher, a good preacher, a well-versed preacher, an intelligent, intellectual, very fluent, 
to speak with kind words and pleasant thoughts. But to read these very words from the Bible, they would be asked to leave and people would get up and walk out. They have no interest in the truth. They're content with their religious ideas. And they don't want to hear about Jesus and that He's coming again or how the Bible tells of their lost condition. But nevertheless, we have here today. And I pray God would speak to your heart if you're lost. Our prayer of the Holy Ghost is coming where you are. And knocking on your heart's door. No doubt the old song has been sung in this old building. Who is that knocking, calling, seeking? Who is that troubling my soul? Sure, it is Jesus wanting. Calling, let me come in and make you whole. Holy Ghost is coming to where you are. Knocking on your heart. He's knocking the door down. Oh no, you're not hearing the thunder. And you're not seeing lightning. But that still small voice of God lets you know this is the truth. And though you're very religious, and done many religious things. You have no peace with God. You have no assurance of heaven. Turn to God today. Call on God in Jesus' name. He will save you. And as a child of God, circumstances have you out of church this morning. But there's some here that have been hurt in the battles down at the church house. Satan stirs up wars. All he needs is one person in a congregation to stir up a war. All he needs is one. Make sure that one's not you. But in the conflict and in the struggles, many have been hurt unnecessarily. And no devil's talked to him to just staying at the house. Just giving up on trying to worship God in public. Trying to serve God in your life. Oh, you know you're saved, but you just don't know where to go anymore. Seems like everywhere's a mess, and that's about the truth. About, But they are. There is the real thing. I told a young woman this week, I seen her at a store on the way to prison. She was sitting there in front of that store talking to another lady. And I asked her, did she know of... Uh, Mooningham Baptist Church out there. And she said, oh, yeah. There's where Brother Van Winkle is, the pastor. I said, I go out there. I've been out there before. Good people. You ought to go. And I said, young lady, you're going to need God one day. Hard times going to come. Sickness going to come. Tragedies will happen. And you're going to need somebody that will help you. Somebody that will love you. Somebody that will take enough heart for you and actually help you in your struggle. Big tears come up in her eyes. She may have been in a real struggle already. And I told her, I said, now, they're not perfect people. They're not any of them perfect. But I said, they are God's people there. You need to get out there. I pray and hope she's there this morning. I pray and hope she's there. She's there. For the glory of God for our own help. And friend, you need to get back to living for Jesus, pointing people to God, honoring Him and worshiping Him, lest you die. And your testimony, nobody believes it. Your testimony of knowing God has none effect on your children or grandchildren because you were out of church all their life. You quit on God. And that left them with just exactly what Satan wanted them to have. Because by your life, you told your children and your grandkids, there's no need going to church. No need to serve God. No need to live for Jesus. No need. It's not important. Church is not important. 
Praying's not important. Preaching ain't important. Singing ain't important. By your life, you've told them. Oh, my Satan will use that. Take them plumb to hell. Plumb to hell. Change that today while you have time. Change that this hour before God. Amen. Hey. And the churches that are real, that still preach the Word of God, still plead with sinners, still glorify the Lord Jesus, magnify His Word, they need you. They need you. They need you. It'd be a great encouragement for you to come be with them. They'd be blessed. Satan says nobody cares. Satan says nobody's going to come. Satan says y'all ought to quit. But when you come, it blesses them to see God has touched hearts and folks are coming by. You'd be a real blessing to a congregation of people just by being there and sit on the pew. And it'd be a blessing to you if you'll look at God instead of the people. If you look at people, you'll always be disappointed. If you look at yourself, you'll be depressed. But if you'll look at God, by the Word of God, through the Spirit of God, you'll be delighted. Look to Him and live. Amen. Thank you for coming. Thank you for being with us today. God bless you. Share this if you would, if you think it is worth sharing. You could touch your family, your friends on Facebook, if you would. I know you might be mocked, you might be criticized, and you might be embarrassed. I have people that I see come on here because it shows me, and I don't think they realize it shows me that they come on and they go back and have their name taken off. They're ashamed to be identified with such. They're ashamed to have their name associated with this work. Maybe they got good reason. But friend, to glorify God, to reach the lost and strengthen the saved, I believe they can find help here if you'd share it. Do something for God today and to His glory. Mash that share button. Amen. If you have to apologize for Tim Ramey's looks and manners and ways, but you don't have to apologize for the Word of God I've read today or for the Holy Ghost that convicts that calls on people to repent. We love you. God bless you. Have a good day. Maybe we'll try it again after a while. Maybe even this season. We'll just have to see. Will you meet me over yonder? Where we're happy when it will. Will you meet, meet, meet me over yonder? Or will now? I first say I will. Oh, yes, I'm bound, bound, bound for that bright city where the saints of God abide. And we'll live with them forever over on the other side. Oh, will you meet, meet, meet me over yonder where we'll happy men dwell? How will you meet, meet, meet me over yonder where we'll nail verse safe farewell. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Bless His name.